Hi, my name is Winslet and welcome to this week's beginner's guide on happiness spam. This is a strategy which was recommended to me by a member of the community through Steam messages. They friended me on Steam and then wrote me a little message about an experience they had and as soon as I, I heard about it I wanted to try it out but I, I didn't have a lot of time and I didn't have a, a lot of time on the channel to highlight specific strategies. I think at the time I was focusing on my, my tier lists or or something uh, along those lines but it's really powerful I actually tried it out this week and I was very happy with the results I wish I tried it out earlier so I could have used it in a dev match but I I didn't quite get around to it but essentially what they were able to do was by turn 30 get numbers like 200 research 400 production 17 influence 200 energy or 150 food on their capital pretty much every turn so pretty massive it's a very explosive uh, return once you reach around turn 30 before that you're at a loss so if you are going to be in like a one-on-one -on -one matchup maybe don't use this strategy but if you've got more time to develop your nation um, really investing into happiness has some really big returns but it's very easy to use it inefficiently so you got to keep that in mind basically in this video here today I'm going to be going over some general tips that I've discovered while playing around with this strategy but I want to make sure I give a proper shout out to the the person who told me about this strategy their name is uh, a, a gnome a moan mayor I want to say a n e m o n e m e e r so yeah they said that basically if you're able to get 70 happiness per city you can get a happiness event on your smaller cities every turn and you while you won't be able to get it every turn on your bigger cities um, because they need more happiness it will work out that you're getting it pretty consistently uh, the the resource doesn't roll over so um, you won't be able to get it every turn and it won't really help if you get over the halfway point if you're trying to get it um, every two turns and you know, all you need is half the, the threshold which is pretty different for happiness when you compare it to like food or any of the other basic resources food and happiness are probably the most um, closely related because you have to cross a threshold to get anything out of them but before that it's not very very efficient so yeah let's look at exactly what does happiness do if I zoom in here I think I've got a couple happy a couple cities that just triggered a happiness event this one here Nasadar was able to get 170 food that looks like um, 150 times what the base resource and food is making and um, it gets that every 20 turns because it's making five happiness a turn it's at a hundred points of happiness as its threshold I think because this city is a a bigger city it's got 14 pops it's at the higher threshold if I go over to this city over here the one with two pops I just check in on it um, it's at a pretty low threshold of only 40 and because it's got less pops um, taking upkeep on happiness and I think some pretty good ways to get it um, it's able to get this pretty consistently making plus 22 happiness a turn will allow you to cross a threshold um, every other turn so pretty consistently you'll be able to get a pretty big bonus out of this city this city over here Pasitar was able to cross its threshold to get 120 once again looks like 150 times what this resource is making here and um, it can make that every three turns with all of its slots filled up I can't make it get it more consistently if I just had two more happiness if I had plus 33 an event would trigger every two turns but because there's no carryover this is basically like a, a third of 70 what is a third of 70 I don't know off the top of my head it's about 20 something like 22 or 23 plus 33 is giving you the same result as plus 28 and plus 22 is going to get you the um, happiness event a little less often you won't get it as in a, as few turns this is going to take three turns for the next event if I take this down it's going to take four turns for us to get our next happiness event um, so yeah what does it do it's going to trigger a good positive event like that 
once you cross the positive, if you get low enough, you will start creating something called a riotor. So if I take out all of these guys um, in six turns, a riotor will spawn, which is really nasty, but also very hard to do. I haven't been able to spawn riotors unless I'm using console commands to put more pops in a city than it deserves. If I like use a console command, I could take this up to 20 pops and it would have too much upkeep for the, the infrastructure that we have here. Um, and uh, when I was trying to see how rioters work, those were the only two times that I was able to get rioters to spawn. You realistically won't see this very often. They've put in a lot of ways to get happiness pretty easily. In the first version of the game, it was easier to get rioters. You had two less happiness slots at the very beginning. So it was a more reasonable consideration that you had to, to take into account. As a newer player, you probably won't have to think about it. But if you are playing Assembly or one of the races that lowers or one of the things that lowers your happiness in exchange for something else. I'm pretty sure assembly can get production from happiness. Um, you may be able to get rioters a little bit easily through trading it for something else. Uh, but yeah, rioters basically waste a pop. If I load up this save here, this is a, a save from last week, and I just had one unhappiness event I let it get down to the negative threshold once and um, it created multiple rioters four rioters it may be like a third of the population we have 18 pops becomes rioters when you hit a negative event um, but they're kind of hard to get rid of I think you can get rid of them through positive events or using this martial law mechanic if you press that, then every three turns, a regular colonist will either be converted back or killed, I think. Yeah, there's a 25% chance that the rioter is killed instead of being converted back into a regular colonist. It will One of those will happen every um, three turns, and while you're under martial law, your colony will produce 20% less income for all resources. So you do have to keep an eye on your happiness if you're like dealing with a lot of volcanic territory or, or hazards. That could be a problem for you. I don't know if I have uncovered any hazards here, but if I just type in hazard up here, I can show you that it will reduce your happiness. At least I believe I sh should be able to show you that. Okay, we don't see any hazards here. Um, I think there's one called Ion Storm. I can't remember what the name of the hazards are. Or like a nuclear... Nope, can't find it easily, but I bet the other map we were looking at has a hazard or, or some volcanic territory. Volcanic territory would be easy enough to show off in the um, in the Imperial Archive, so uh, if I don't see any hazards around me, I'll, I'll do it like that. There's a hazard, yeah, these, we got a couple hazards here. Essence gashes reduce your energy income by 20%, but also minus 8 happiness when it's attached to a segment of a city. So if I took this city out to here, it would reduce its happiness per turn by 8, and then it would be you know easier to get a negative event. Right now, this place is making a lot of happiness through, I think, the Stadium of Arcadium, which is one of my tips, but I don't want to get there too early. Right. Happiness events can either generate food, research, production, energy, cosmite, or influence. Getting cosmite or influence can really boost your ability to compete with other nations. If you have more cosmite, you can mod your units more, um, which will make you a lot harder to fight. But if you have more influence, um, what you can get is you can get more units from like NPC factions. So all around, it's a great way to push your combat effectiveness in the early game by getting mods or more units um, it's just kind of random you have to play with what the game gives you which can make it a little bit harder you have to be very flexible and adaptive with this strategy but I think in the long run you get a lot more resources so it's, it's worth the risk in the early game um, but you know depends if you're an MP and somebody can get to you quickly enough I think AI you don't really have to worry about them too much before turn 30 they may cause problems but not a whole lot and then after that, I think you'll have a strong enough force that you can fight them off. Um, whenever you get a happiness event, like say in these smaller cities, it always generates at least 
50 research if it's going to do research it won't give you like 10 research or, or 35 research it'll give you 50 research or 50 food 50 production or 50 energy i believe with cosmite and influence the number is 10 i think you can get either 10 influence or 10 cosmite off of smaller cities and then once they get to be bigger they can generate more um, but i'm not certain about that maybe a size 16 or size 17 city would make 17 influence because I think that would make sense based off of what um, I was sent over in Steam. Uh, yeah, this this basically also allows you to have more pops. Having higher happiness means that you can have more pops in a city because you will always have upkeep on that. You won't always have upkeep on your agricultural or rather your food. Um, your upkeep from food, you can get rid of that through, I think, one of the food buildings over here. One of this reduces your upkeep by two and each pop only costs two food. So you don't really have to worry about that if you can get that building. You don't have to worry about the food upkeep if you can get that building. If you uh, look here, it says I can fit 29 pops in here. If I keep expanding, if I keep adding jobs, I can actually get something like 50 pops in there. And if you have more happiness, you'll be able to effectively have more pops. Having 50 pops will would lead to rioters most likely unless you had a lot of happiness boosting buildings like maybe the start state in arcadian and um, all the upgraded buildings but at a certain point it's not super efficient to keep grabbing these so um i wouldn't if you're able to get you know your event every two turns that's that's pretty good often and i i think that's good enough investing more production to to get it every turn is is very risky because you could be getting events um or rather you could be using that production on something else. I don't think we talked about the thresholds, um, the negative thresholds too much. The positive thresholds are 40 for cities that are one through six population. If I click on, I don't have one with seven, but I do have this one with eight. If I go over to this one, its threshold is 70. And the one that is a little bit smaller at six is going to have a threshold of 40 um, positive so it's 40 70 or 100 70 happiness is the um, the upper threshold for cities with up to uh, or rather between 7 and 12 pops so this one at 11 it will be at 70 but once it gets to 12 the threshold is going to move up to 100 um, happiness for a happiness event so yeah the negative events work slightly differently if i go to this big one um, it's negative 40 and i believe when i tried to put some cities with hazard some smaller cities like on top of a hazard if i like built a new one and put it right there that its threshold was negative 40. i could test that relatively easily with the console commands but in the interest of time i think we're going to move on you're just going to have to trust me that the lower limit is is minus 40. it just makes sense you know upper limit for the small cities 40 the lower limit is negative 40. i think if i look up happiness events here the values that it lists have not been updated they haven't been updated in a while yeah it's saying that it doesn't tell you the numbers just like oh if you have three pops your your thresholds are 30 and negative 30 no it's 40 and negative 40 and at seven pops that turns to 70 um, and negative 40 and at 13 pops or I think yeah if you've once you get 13 that number changes they probably move these numbers around a little bit to 100 as the upper limit and minus 40 is the lower limit for w when something happens when you cross that threshold something happens okay so um, yeah, I think we can now talk about the Stadium of Arcadiums, which if you looked around this map, there's so many. They're everywhere. We've got one over here. We've got one over here. We've got one over here hidden underneath the name of this city and one over here. I almost grabbed that one just so I could be like, look how many Stadiums of Arcadiums I have. The reason I love this building is because it can give you 10 happiness income on your smaller cities right from the beginning of the game all you have to do is fight the units that were on here or buy off the npc faction that was sitting on top of this i've noticed that in a lot of maps the stadium of arcadium is blocked off by an npc faction so you, you all you really need is influence to buy them off 
and in um, cities like this, they'll be getting events pretty much every other turn. It's making plus 22 with guys in here. I could take them off of that, and um, if I had a stadium Arcadium and be making plus 21, effectively would mean every two turns this gets a happiness fin. Pretty good. Pretty good in the in the smaller cities, but carries over to those bigger cities too, because once you have the bigger cities, the upkeep, like I mentioned earlier, will start to take you to um, close to like zero happiness a turn or plus one happiness a turn, which effectively means you're going to be waiting infinity or quite a while till you see your next happiness event. And just getting that extra plus 10 will, will allow you to keep pumping out those events more often. Um, so yeah, I like them a lot. I think that once you see them, building towards them can be a really good strategy that in like broadcast centers um, because yeah, they, they pay off very, very quickly. They're super special and the, the sheer like value of 10 happiness is is much higher than like say 10 food or or even like 5 Cosmite I think because you can get Cosmite out of that happiness but it also in turn serves other purposes. Um, but I know other people would disagree and be like, no, you want you want to know what you're getting. You go for something that's going to be consistently giving you what you want. Uh, so yeah, the next thing would be popular support that can also boost your happiness in your cities. Right now it's saying that I'm getting plus 10% colony happiness income. So any of these cities, um, I can go to them and see uh, what they're making and it's saying down at the bottom of this one is getting plus three happiness from popular support. It must be taking all those other values, adding them up, and then uh, multiplying it by 10% to get plus three. It must be like plus 30. And then, yeah, plus 10% would give you plus three. That would be before the upkeep, wouldn't it? Because the upkeep would, yeah, cancel out everything. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's a nice way to get a little bit of extra happiness. Obviously, it's not a lot of happiness, but if you're getting... Um, happiness already then it will boost it just just a little bit more and, and maybe help you get it a little bit quicker say if we were able to get our popular support to the next level if we declared a war on another one person like a just war this this could probably become um, plus 35 happiness turn instead of plus 33 allowing us to get an event every two turns instead of every three and I can't I can't do anything to really increase it here right now unless I build something so using popular support would be a great way to do that. Do keep in mind if you declare an unjust war, if you go into somebody that you don't have a Cassus Belly with, I do have one on him, do have one on him. Yeah, this one. If I try to declare war like this, then I'll have um, negative popular support, which, because I already have some, would take me to neutral. But if I was to declare that on multiple people, if I took that down to negative 200 popular support, I believe this effect would be reversed and I'd be getting minus 15% colony happiness. Declaring a war on somebody without a cast of spell can be very effective though. If you can take them out of the game, then that um, popular support modifier goes away. It doesn't like stay with you forever. The positive one also doesn't stay with you forever. It stays with you for I think 10 turns, um, maybe depending on your level of cast of spell. A major one may last longer than a minor one, but a negative one will last until that war's over. Okay, racial happiness. This is something that people miss a lot. Um, over here, we can check to see how each of the races on the map feel about us. The Amazon players do not like us, and that means that any colony that belongs to Amazon is going to lose three happiness. And syndicate ones, um, since we are syndicate and we've made quite a few of them, you look, it says plus 200 for own race and then plus 50 for each own colony. That will, that will allow us to get plus four happiness on all of our syndicate colonies. So let's go click around and, and see if I can find that number. Race race relations plus four. So that's that's where that's coming into play on this city and it's gonna be plus four on all of them because I have enough um, syndicate cities. I think that effect will happen at plus 400 uh, race relations when that value is at 400. So you need one, two, three, four cities of your own race to get that extra little bit of happiness. It's not a lot, but it could add up to um, making a bit of a difference in the long run. So yeah, that would be worth bringing in to the picture here. If you burn down a bunch of cities, those, those places are going to be unhappy and they might create rioters. So um, 
if somebody hates you, it might be better to actually migrate their species over to a different city type. It depends on if you want to be evil or good or or what else is going on around you. You do have to look at the state of the map. So next thing, this is what makes this strategy really work. City of the Awakened. So it's a it's a heritor strategy, a heritor skill rather. Um, we're about to unlock it at turn 30. I think the reason the person who told me about this had as good a production was they were able to get research sectors up and running and they were able to research this a lot quicker as well as bread and circuses the nice thing is once in the military tree bread and circuses is in the military tree and city of the awakened is over here in the society tree um, so you can research them at the same time you can go for them at the same time this is uh, you can beeline for it like i did you can go through other routes to get there um but yeah i think I think beelining for it is pretty good because once you have this active, every city is going to get plus 20 happiness and it's going to be 20% easier to get more people. So yeah, if we go click on this one, it has a food threshold. It says once you have 92 um, food, then you grow a new pop. You can reduce that by 20% with the with this, this thingy right here. It does take a while to activate. It's going to take us a couple turns, three turns, to get the, the points that we need. It's going to cost 200 energy, but it will pay for itself very quickly. When you compare that to Bread and Circuses, Bread and Circuses targets a single colony, whereas City of the Awakened affects everything in the Emperor. All, all of the cities are um, affected, and you can't strip it off of a city as easily. You can, it's much easier to get the benefit from City of the Awakened as it is from Bread and Circuses. A Marauder stack can come out of nowhere and steal your Bread and Circuses city, or an enemy commander might do that, and then you've wasted this 60 energy and, and 4 op points. It's just gone, and it, it didn't really give you any tactical advantages um, unless that gives you I don't know, Cosmite or something in one turn and it allows you to mod out something, then I guess you could say it's giving you some benefit, but it's not It's not going to be enough. It's not going to pay for itself if somebody's able to grab this a city that you put bread and circuses on. Um, but yeah, that combined with getting plus 50% more resources from this happiness events and plus 12 happiness combined with the plus 20 happiness here and the reduced... Um, thingy will allow your cities get very big very quickly and generate a crazy amount of resources once they get there. It's it's an explosive strategy, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, I, th I think bread and circuses is one that you kind of have to wait to get. If you get it too early, then you're going to lose the cities. You may need to get some mods on your units. Going for stuff like this makes sense. Um, but I, I don't think there's much point in waiting to get this. If you have three cities, it may not pay for itself off that quickly. But I think if you have as as least as long as you have four cities for this to benefit, I think that this will pay itself off very quickly. Plus twenty happiness in four cities is like essentially um, raw income of plus eighty. You you'd get that paid off in it at about two or three turns. And I think the benefits that you'd get from those events would actually be better than estimating, you know, one happiness is equal to one energy. I, don't, I think in this situation, once you've stacked up happiness, it becomes much better and it's like it's going to pay itself off in one turn, basically. Um, yeah, Bread and Circuses has an upkeep. This does not have an upkeep, so that's another advantage on uh, City of the Awakened. You want to put it on safe cities. Um, yeah. Now, for bread and circuses, what I want to do for this is I want to skip ahead to turn 40, and we can talk a little bit about the best cities to put on to show you what, what is a safe city, right? Um, it's usually the one in the center of your territory, like your capital. The capital makes sense to put on, too, because it's going to be getting pretty big happiness vents anyways, and I don't think it's going to take very long to do it. I just say it's going to take four turns, and I don't know if we have bread and circuses on it yet. Oh, no, we don't. So, yeah, you got to put one on the capital. That's a must, right? Um, but there may be some others where having plus 12 happiness would be more valuable than boosting the happiness income. 
yeah, say like this one here, if you had plus 12 more happiness, we'd be able to get to plus 50 um, happiness a turn. It'd happen every two turns. I think that would be slightly better than uh, giving this plus 12. But then again, that would take this to an event every three turns, taking that to over 33 a turn. Probably means you want it on the capital, but this isn't a bad second choice. I just wouldn't put it on... Um, maybe this city because we do have enemies on this side that that could push through and be a problem i build up from some pretty good stacks to keep them off of my territory but i haven't been aggressive i've just been playing the economic game i think earlier i said i didn't have very good research options so yeah this city i i got more recently and it was able to allow me to push my research um that i i put off pretty quickly the early game research that I, I had been put off been putting off to allow me to get my economic and military uh, developed enough to defend this stuff and now it's going very very quickly we're in a pretty good position I have all the research up here that I could ever really need and yeah if I were to continue this I think I'd be in an okay position because of that research it might be good to boost this one's uh, production just so we can get more potential uh, research if it chooses research then you're going to get a crazy amount of research i don't think if it makes more research it's more likely to choose it so keep that in mind um i think after thinking about it the one that makes the most sense is the capital yeah this will also reduce our requirement for happiness events so um that threshold may not have we may not have needed to spend it here to get an event every three turns i think if i go in here and i rush you you're going to reduce the threshold by like what 20 percent or something we can look at the description to see what it says all right so now it happens every <laughs> every 60 turns but we we're making 28 so that's that's a better number that's a pretty nice looking city isn't it i think that's about as best as we could have hoped for and there's other ways to boost your happiness. You could make this. That would give you just plus six happiness there. And I'd have two more slots to play around with. That's that's going to be enough once you get that to take this to plus 50. I just need to put one more worker in here. And now that's event every two turns. Still would be worth considering putting um, bread and circuses on here. And maybe building out the, the wellness building. That's this building right here i was researching it because it makes your uh, events require 50 percent less happiness at level five and then they also generate plus 150 percent so i think that combines with bread and circuses to be um plus 200 percent that's that's massive that's very explosive and it only took me 40 turns to get to this point so um i'm sure if i practiced this i could get it to be more like 35 or so. I, I'm pretty sure I wasted some research here, uh, just getting mods before I realized, oh, I really need bread and circuses and that's kind of far up this tree. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'd like to see what other people think about this strategy. If you think it's a, a good one, if it's a competitive one, if you can make it um, pay off quicker, I'd like to know what you did differently, what kind of planet you were given if you were able to get research sectors next to your capital because you know you look around here i don't have anything really i just have the stuff up north which is why i had to go up here and do this um what else is there to say the new colony district buildings will allow you to get a little bit more happiness if you're playing oathbound and kirko it's not um going to be open to many syndicate heritor playthroughs but if you're able to get an oathbound city i think you can get their their racial district building i forget what it's called but um it would be in the same slot as this one i just had it the other day uh i bet if i took two seconds to look it up i can figure out their names and show you that you can get happiness from the kirko one and the and the oathbound one Bear with me. This will take me two seconds. I, I just need to open up this thing. Yeah, so it's the breeding grounds for the Kirko. I think if I find that, then we're good. You'll, you'll trust me, right? Mm, it's not how I spell breeding. 
So right, yeah, this one can give you plus three happiness um, and two job slots at the basic thing if you take it up to immaculate. And if you want to know more about this, I, I did a whole video on it last week, so I, I strongly encourage that you watch it. You could get six job slots. Each one generates five happiness and ten food. So you could get six times five plus 30 extra happiness from that building on top of what your city is already making. Those cities find it pretty easily to... Uh, to generate a happiness event every turn but once again you don't want to go over that threshold if you've got like 150 happiness uh, income per turn on a city that needs 100 you're wasting 50 influence or rather 50 um, happiness so yeah don't do that um pretty sure that's everything i had in my notes here can't believe it um yeah if you want to Tell me about other strategies involving happiness, like the assembly one that I mentioned earlier. I'd love to know what people are thinking, what people are saying. I know lowering your morale is something people sometimes play around with because, you know, they don't deserve it too often. But lowering your happiness is, I don't think it's really worth it. I think increasing your happiness is far more payoff than lowering it in exchange for something else. But yeah, thanks for joining me. I'll see you around. Have a good one.